how do you how do you journey from that and end up you know on on the biggest races i mean you've been all over the world off camera we're talking i'm from bulgaria it's like hey i've raced in bulgaria i've raced here how does how does that 11 12 year old kid end up you know on the starting line at the deck or the roof of africa how you know I, I think you talk about um i don't know if you can call it setting yourself a goal yes or a passion for something um you know many of the youngsters now it, it, it is a lot easier um and at that that age i knew that i couldn't i would love to have raced but i couldn't race so every day after school there's a ride to um jack gray motorcycles it was an old motorcycle business rodney gray the famous road racer 12 time superbike champion rodney became a, a well, he, he actually gave me the name of Alfie. My, my name's not Alfie. Not. So people don't know that, but uh, Alfie's only a nickname. Okay. From 12 years old, uh, Rodney, a little bit deaf from the super bikes. And I used to go there after work to help w work on his uh, brother, Jeff Gray. He had a, a beautiful Hondas in those days. And I used to go and help work on the bikes. And because Rodney was a bit deaf, when I told him my name is Andrew. Okay. He said, Alfie. And because I had red hair, looked like a, I don't know, looked like from the Mad Magazine, I yes. think Mad. And from that day it's onwards, stuck. only my parents called me Andrew. Nobody <laughs> knows me. It's a bit difficult when I get on a plane now because I've got to make sure that the travel agent remembers that I'm not Alfie Cox because I won't Andrew. get on the plane. Yeah. <laughs> so this if everybody knows, <laughs> that's it. So yeah, Rodney, actually from 12 years old, I got the, I got the nickname of Alfie and it's, it's stayed ever, ever since. And yeah, I think the passion of going to the motorcycle dealership after school, helping wash bikes, you know, and uh, yeah, that's how it grew, thinking one day I'd love to race, you know, and knowing that at, in, in those days at about 16, if you were in grade 10, I think it is now, um, it was not a problem to leave school. I already told my dad, end of grade 10, which is standard eight. I'm gone. I got my job in Peter Maritzburg at the Honda dealership with Mr. John Smith. Rodney, dad had closed down the bike shop and he was also working there, Mervyn Cookamore. So I had two mentors in the bike shop. And uh, yeah, and then you know, when you turn 16, your parents buy you a buzz bike. And um, I remember my mom going to West Bank and the bike was, I think, 299 Rand and she financed it. I mean, can you imagine yeah. that if you think about it today? Yeah, that the value was, of the 299 the, yeah, rand back then 100 percent. probably 29,000 rand today, if not more. Yeah, so it was like basically she financed 299 rand at West Bank. So I got this this buzz bike, which is every every youngster's dream when you turn 16 to have a 50 cc, you know. Beautiful. But it was not three months later. Um, I was going to get, I was going to leave school, obviously, and go and get a job. And then Mr. John Smith said, okay, this is the deal. You sell, we'll sell your 50 and we put the money from your 50 into the first motocross bike, a, a CR125. Okay. My sister and my brother-in-law, Dale and Martin helped and um, got my first motocross bike at 16. That's why I started so young in life and then continued until, you know, my late 40s uh, racing, so. If you enjoyed this content and you would like to see more, please visit our MitMac Masterclass channel on YouTube. That's where the magic happens. Bye-bye.